The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, for we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes, look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me that portion of Psalm 72 on the screen. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness he shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish, there shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, sharers in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. 
of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for the ages in God who created all things so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety may, might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. be seated. So do you like the addition of our crucifer this morning? Yes. Case and Chase will be doing this uh, for us 
on a regular, ba fairly regular basis on, for this service on Sunday mornings. And we're really happy to, to welcome them into these roles. Well, here we are. We've made it to Epiphany. Happy Epiphany. <laughs> yeah. Your Merry Christmases are gone, okay? Happy New Year's, okay. Uh, happy Epiphany is fine. And it's, it's rare. We, we don't often have a uh, feast of the Epiphany that flows and falls on Sunday. Uh, but we do this year, which is kind of a fun sort of thing to do. We have all these sorts of traditions around Epiphany. One is the chalking of the door. We do that sometimes in the church and sometimes we do that at homes. Uh, I'm not going to give you any details about what that is because as you leave today, our church school kids will be there. They've got a little baggie to give you that's got a, some chalk in it and an explanation of what chalking of the door is and, and how to do it. So you're welcome to take one for each, each household that you would like to, to, to con perhaps consider doing that. It's just a house blessing is what it is. But there are other sorts of things we do. We've got this beautiful, beautiful crash up here that's set up, and everybody's there. Uh, everybody. Oh, we don't have a Darth Vader or a dinosaur. But, but those can be arranged, and it's not unusual to find those in creches. I found them there. Uh, but there's a, there's a tradition that uh, we sometimes do in our homes and also in churches, and that is when we set the crash up, we don't put the wise men in it. We put everyone but the wise men. And then, it's my practice typically when I've done this, is that we put the wise men somewhere way over here. And then the next Sunday we move them back to here. And then the next Sunday, we move them back to here. And then we put them over here. And then on the Feast of the Epiphany, there they are. Them and their camels. And they're all there because that's, that's the story of, of how that came about. So we've got traditions like that, uh, that that are very rich and meaningful. Now, if you, if you go back and read... The, the story of the Gospels, they're, 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 you know, some of those traditions are not there. We've, for instance, uh, how, many, how many wise men are there? No, go read the Gospel. It doesn't tell you how many there are. It just says wise men. And Matthew, don't go looking in Mark and Luke and John. They don't tell that story. Matthew does. And he doesn't say how many. So traditions have grown up that it's either three up to as many as 12. Now it's not in the Scriptures, so maybe we shouldn't do it, but could you imagine showing up for the Christmas Eve pageant and telling the folks, no, we're not going to have wise men in this? I would just have to resign. I would just have to go away because that's a tradition that, that, that's rich and, and very meaningful for folks, and there's really nothing wrong with that. When you get ready to chalk your doors, there's a formula that you use, uh, and, and, and the three letters in the middle are C, uh, M, and B. And those letters correspond to the first letter of the name of each of the wise men. Caspar, Melchior, and, and Balthazar. I usually get them confused and mixed up the names, but, but that's pretty, pretty much where they are. But there's no names. Look in the scriptures. There's no names for them. Again, it's a tradition that's grown up. It's a very rich tradition, and it has meaning for us, and, and that's fine. I'm not one who thinks we must throw away everything that is not literally there, but I also want to suggest that in this wonderful, incredibly complex story that we read in Matthew's Gospel today, there is something for us that goes beyond just the traditions that we assign to this very, very special day. Wise men, the, 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 the word used in, in, in Greek is, is magi, or, which can, comes from the term magus. And that referred to a specific group of people, believe it or not. Priests in the religion of Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism is one of the oldest religions ever. It still exists. 
And it was located primarily in Persia at that time. So these, and, and, and as part of it was that they used astrology. They watched the stars and the sky for signs. And so here were these guys from Persia who were watching the, the stars and they knew for themselves that there had been a prophecy that the king of the Jews would be born in Bethlehem. And it would be signaled by a star that they wouldn't know before. And so that's what happened. They see this star and they go, Oy vey! Well, actually, they didn't. <laughs> they see this star and they go, Look! Look! There must be a new king of the Jews. So let's go see him. There's got to be a shower. And we should be there. There's always cake and all of those strange little games you play. <coughs> and we'll take some gifts as we go. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We're going to take some gifts. However many of them there were, they took those gifts. And they set out following the star, kind of like you and I when we in our own lives see something that draws us and we go toward it. We try to keep it in front of us, and so they did. And they head out to, to Bethlehem and wind up in Jerusalem. Why? I can just hear the star going, recalculating, recalculating. <laughs> well, the reason that they may have gone to Jerusalem, the reason they may have gone was because Herod was the king of the Jews. And maybe, maybe they thought that this was a new birth in the royal family. And they went to check it out with him first. After all, he's a wonderful sort of guy, you know. He really isn't. They wind up in Jerusalem with Herod, who is the consummate politician. He will do anything to keep power. To hold on to his being the king of the Jews. He will do anything to hold on to the wealth, the power, and the authority that goes with, with all of that. Even to the point that he killed his wife and children because he was afraid they were going to execute a coup on his position. Caesar Augustus once said of, of Herod, I would rather be a pig than one of his sons. That's pretty brutal. So they go see Herod, this, this political first. And I, I know in, in your head right now, you're going, historically, I can see that in this kind of person who lived before, and some of you are going, I can see it in this kind of person who's alive now somewhere in this world. We can all see some of that in people who, for whatever reason, will throw anyone literally under the bus to maintain and hold on to whatever power and wealth they have. Well, Herod comes out and he says, they say, we've come to pay homage to this, this new member of your family. And he said, somebody's had a kid? And they say, yes. And they say, we understand it was in, to be in Bethlehem. And he said, I'll tell you what, I, I'm really interested in this. I, I would like to go visit my family. And, and, and to celebrate this with them. So you go and check it out and you come back and tell me. Because then I'm going to buy them a gift and take it and go to the next baby shower. So they head out. Recalculating. They get back on board with the star. And they head to Bethlehem. They get there. They get there and, and they, they have to make a decision. You see, it's not right after Christmas. If you haven't caught on, this is a good time later. Because Mary and Joseph and Jesus have moved 
They're no longer in Nazareth. They're now in a house in Bethlehem. They have to decide, do we go in that door of that house or not? And they do. And when they walk in, here's this child. And they take out their gifts and they pay homage. And then they get up and they leave. James Taylor has this absolutely wonderful song. I don't know if you know it. Home by Another Way. It's the story of the Magi. And it's, it's beautifully told. He does a wonderful job with it. But what hooks me is the, is the title. Home by Another Way. You see, like you and I, when we encounter things in our lives, these wise men, these wise people who, who came out of that room, they had to make, out of that home, they had to make a decision. They had to decide which way to go. Do we go back to Herod? Or do we go a, another way? You see, I think that's what this Scripture brings to us. I think it's, it's where it hooks us in our lives. You and I, we could decide which way we're going to go. We could, we could have a checklist. A checklist can be really helpful at times. Check this off, check this off, reset the GPS, check that off, the whole thing. We can address those things very easily in a checklist, but I want to suggest to us that there is a decision that you and I must make before we decide which way we're going to go. And it's quite simply this. Which king of the Jews are we going to follow? Which king of the Jews are we going to follow? Now, there's some pretty clear delineation there. I mean, you've got Herod here who will do anything, hurt anybody, lie, cheat, kill to maintain power and authority and wealth, and who loudly proclaims, I am the king of the Jews. And is quite proud of it. And is threatened by anyone else who does it. Or there is this child in this house in Bethlehem. Parents are poor. He is poor. He's a child who has no standing in the society of the time. He's a kid. Makes no claim to being king of anything. And later, as he's getting ready to die, when someone looks at him and says, are you the king of the Jews? He doesn't say, yes, I am. He says, you say, I am. Who are we going to follow? Well, if I follow this, this person with the power and the authority and the wealth, maybe I can get some of that. Maybe you can. But I suspect that will, it will cost us our lives. So it's time to go home. It's time to go home. We've, we've come. We've seen the baby in the manger. We've, we've gone to the house in Bethlehem. We've seen this child. It's time to go home. Which way are you going? Amen.
let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one body with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and again, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us join in prayer with God's people in all times and places. We pray for those in authority throughout the world. We pray especially for our Donald, our president, Rick, our governor, Randall, our mayor, and all legislative and judicial bodies. That they may lead us in the way of justice and peace. We pray for the leaders of all faiths, especially our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, Dabney, and all clergy at Iona Hope and our partners in faith. That they may walk with us as we draw closer to you. Lead us and all people in the world to desire peace and goodwill for everyone and to work for peace and justice. Open our hearts to care for everyone everywhere. Instill in us a love of your creation and a desire to treat it in a caring way. Help us to see your hand in all creation. Hear our prayers for all who are hurting in mind, body, and spirit, especially those listed in our bulletin, our pets, and all offered in voice and thoughts. Please draw near to you in the name of the Receive into your eternal fold all who have died. Comfort our hearts as we mourn. Comfort us, Holy Spirit. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the ministries at Iona Hope, especially the ushers. We offer our thanksgivings for the many blessings of this day, for our guests and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray for those who are committed to our daily prayers, especially Patrick, Jason, Lori, Clint, Susie, Cindy, Richard, Bruce, Mindy, David, Patrick, Kelly, Deb, Natalie, Barbara, Gail, Bud, Nicholas, and James. In our congregation, we pray for the Flesh family, the Forbes family, the Foster family, the Fraga family, the Fredrickson family, the Freed family. We pray for the repose of Francis Trena, who recently departed this life. We also pay for our, pray for our pets, especially Howard, Juliet, Minna, Maud, Sugar, Boogie, and Buddy. 
Are there others for whom we should pray and blessings for which we give thanks? Peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Oh, the Magi were the prophets, and they wandered through the desert, and they saw the star above them, and they knew they'd find their way through the valley of the shadow with the hope of human kindness. They were strengthened by the vision of a new and better day. And the wise men spoke of peace on earth, of harmony and struggle. Now to light the way of man. 
the multitudes by the lakeside by blessing the gifts of a few people. Bless these gifts to the feeding of the hungry, and bless us in your service, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy. silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. 
We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ, grant that we, burning with, that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with Columba and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
Now in joyful thanksgiving for all the gifts we have received, let us pray together saying, God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you.